This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you guys a degradation test of a Mercedes EQC with over 230,000 kilometers on the odometer. That's quite high mileage on a Mercedes, right? So, um, yes, uh, one thing I was wondering, hey, you know, these Mercedes or these German cars, they have a very nice and flat charging curve. How is the degradation after a while? after so many kilometers. Well, okay, so um, first of all, this uh, Mercedes uh, was not charged on that much high power charging. It was mostly charged on this Chem Power. It's a, it's a T series that uh, they have, and it was fed with roughly 40 kilowatts, so only 0.5, actually less than 0.5 C, which should be fairly nice for the battery, right? Uh, interior seems uh, relatively uh, in good shape for that high, uh, high kilometer, I have to say. And then, so, um, I didn't do this test myself. Uh, when I went to visit the new Camp Power factory, I was, I got a ride in this uh, EQC. I was like, whoa, there's lo lots of kilometers over just two years. So, um, um, but I let the driver do the test for me. I just gave him instructions on what to do. So he had to just charge the car to 100%. He did that in the garage at the DC fast charger. And then, uh, okay, uh, sorry for the schmutz. And then he drew it down to 20%. He had a trip from uh, Lachti to, I think, Helsinki, a little bit beyond it, and then back again. And you can see the result. Okay, this is the, the exact number. Uh, sorry for all the schmutz. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he should have cleaned the camera. I guess he didn't see, but okay, it doesn't matter too much. What we see is that he was cruising at 115 kilometers per hour on the speedometer. It was minus one degrees outside. Uh, I guess real speed is right, right about 110 kilometers per hour. When, if I would do this test, I would cruise at 90 kilometers per hour to get slightly lower uh, C rating and therefore less losses, but it shouldn't matter too much. And you see here, the number here is that um, 279 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, it's kind of high, <laughs> but that's just how it is. Uh, you could see it's not the, the most efficient car and also in winter, it been tends kind of thirsty. And then he is using Nuken Hakkapalitta 10 studded tires. The studded tires themselves shouldn't actually consume that much juice. I have measured studded tires from Nuken to be fairly efficient, actually more efficient than, than, than I think it was Nerius uh, studless tires. But okay, so based on all these numbers, we can't together but here you see uh, it's two years old only this is 234,000 kilometers and then the cycle here I base it on the range test uh, I can find the range test here if you search for EQC uh, well, okay I mean what kind of what kind of range does he get? Uh, I guess he could get something like 400 during summer, but then less during winter. So, but I, I count the 400 kilometer as the, the cycle number. And then what I basically do is you, you take the, the, the total distance divided by 400 kilometers and get estimated cycle. Uh, it's not 100% correct, but it's like a good estimation. And then we have the gross capacity. I believe it's 90 kilowatt hour. EV database will claim 85 kilowatt hour and they say it's just an estimation, but I think it should be nine. I heard 90 from some Mercedes guy a while ago. That's why. And then I also measured that when it was brand new, and it was show you here that some of these numbers are not just taken out of the blue. Um, you see here, okay, you, you can see down here that during the range test, I actually measured 80 kilowatt hour. And the, some of you guys might be wondering, hey, but uh, wh why is, wh where do you get that number from? This is actual real world consumption that the trip meter shows, including discharging losses. Many, many cars, they will actually supply a higher number as the gross capacity, but the, the actual value they get for at driving is different and then in general I can say that well it's not 100% correct but in general I've tested it over and over again that um, uh, if you drive faster maybe I have some results here in general I don't uh, test I don't have time to test all of them but here for, yeah, for example the Honda e if you drive faster you will have higher C rating and therefore more losses so the, uh, the Honda e I did actually test it and you see that when you go 120 you get actually it looks like you get less kilowatt hour out of the battery and the remaining is actually heat loss that is not measured in the meter but okay so why does that have to affect the consumption i mean the degradation test well because uh, first of all he only discharged 20 percent ideally he should discharge with five percent but at least he did it in one go or within one day without any idling stationary stuff like that 
uh, but we did measure 73.3 kilowatt hour. If he draws slower, he would get slightly more out of this. And then we don't know exactly 20% how uh, accurate it was. I think this 8.4% here is relatively a good result. If we would drive it down to 1% or 5%, we should still get maybe, you know, so let's say somewhere between 7 and 9% maybe. So um, I have to say this is a very good result, 8%. Okay, what other cars do we have that we can compare with? For example, Millennium Falcon, I tested. Well, okay, the number highlight uh, colors are actually the same as the alternating color. But uh, Millennium Falcon, okay, was eight years old, but I have learned that uh, age on the battery is actually, it doesn't affect the degradation that much, very, very little, really. It's just actually the number of cycles that actually brings up the, cons uh, the, the degradation. And uh, in comparison, Millennium Falcon has more degradation than uh, EQC. Um, is that partly because of age? Yeah, maybe, but um, this is good, good good news, I have to say. It's a good result that the EQC, despite having so many cycles, it's still in good shape, 73 kilowatt hour, okay. It has seen its better days, so of course, it, it you cannot expect, expect 80 kilowatt hour for after two years and 234,000 kilometers. But uh, yeah, and also, I should also mention, by the way, you see head on top here. This was also two years, but not that many driving kilometers, but uh, then I did not measure any degradation but that's because some cars will actually hide degradation in a kind of smart way maybe also to make it more uh, consistent that for the driver after using it for one two years after driving only 24,000 kilometers then you should not have any visible degradation even though they might be still so uh, but you see that also here impressive that also e-golf uh, which doesn't have active cooling has also pretty low degradation. Also, there's a, another cryptic number I show here, uh, which is that uh, if you just look at degradation number separately, it will be almost no, then it, all cars will appear to have high degradation. But I try to also calculate another uh, variable, which is degradation per cycle, roughly, right? It's a number that comes out here. And then in general, the lower this number is, the better it is, meaning that Despite having high cycles, uh, if you have okay degradation, wait, it's degradation versus cycle. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And then in, in worst case, you see that here, Model 3, <laughs> this is MC Hammer, Model 3 Performance has actually really high degradation versus just how many cycle or how many how many kilometer it has driven. And also, for example, here, Kia Soul also, the, this is the first generation Soul, also quite bad. And then Leaf comes also on the bottom here. So, so you see that the EQC is actually on the upper half, actually towards the top, pretty much. So very good. Yeah, I have to say I'm really impressed of the EQC uh, result. One idea would be for me to try to find some taxis around Oslo. And then, but then hmm, how practical is it for me to uh, borrow the taxi and then drive it? And then, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys seen that uh, this summer I did lots of uh, degradation tests myself uh, and a few that was done by others, but um, at least now we have one extra entry, a German car, yes. So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.